Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, I thought we would go ahead and revisit a topic that we've actually talked a little bit about in the past, and that's voice of the customer. And so you remember, you know, from, from a voice of the customer perspective, we've done some videos on, you know, just kind of overview on how it works. We've talked a little bit about question design. We talked a little bit about survey distribution. One of the topics that we didn't necessarily get into and really cover with any great detail was this whole concept of survey responses versus feedback and, and when to use one versus the other and what are the differences in some of those items. And so I've had several questions and people kind of asking about those. So I thought being, you know, summertime might be a good idea to go back and revisit that a little bit. And so when you start talking about responses versus feedback, it all has to really do with how that information is stored inside CRM once it actually goes out and pulls for those survey responses. If you have a traditional response type survey that you might be using for marketing or, or any type of situation, it's going to go out and when it pulls those responses, it's going to take all of the responses from all of your actively published surveys and it's going to bring them into one entity. So you will see all of those information in your survey responses. And so this is you know nice for very quick running surveys, things that you might be using from an application standpoint where you, know, you just want to get the information, capture it, do some analytics on it and work with it from there. At the same point in time, you might have surveys that you are going to run over longer periods of time. And so that might be things like a follow-up survey on, an, on a case. So every time you, you know, complete a case with a customer, they get an email survey that just asks them information about it that you want to actually be able to work with kind of independently, store that information over time, maybe make some changes to some so the entity, customize it, and really do some, some major analytics on that on how you're moving forward. And that's really where the feedback portion of this comes in because what it does is it creates a new entity inside the system to basically store those response or those feedback items so you can use that information as you're moving in the future. So, we're <clears throat> so let's go ahead and talk just a little bit about this from a CRM perspective. So I'm back in CRM and I'm going to go into my voice of the customer. So I'm going to go into voice of customer and I've got a couple of different surveys here that we've actually already kind of pre-created just to talk a little bit about it and then we'll walk through some of the other the facets of it. So I have kind of a, a standard marketing survey that I would use for you know setting out marketing material, marketing literature, those kind of different situations where the responses would be coming in and we would be working with them. I also have my kind of post case follow-up survey that I would be working with that would be sent out to people as they were going through and, and completing case management capabilities. I've published both of these and, and have have these set up. One of them is using just standard survey responses. One of them is using feedback. Um, as the uh, responses come in, they will come into here and I will be able to see the active survey responses from this situation. They'll tell me when the survey was completed, scoring information, those kind of things. Now remember from a response setting standpoint that it does take a little bit of time um, for these responses to come in. I've had situations where, you know, from the survey being completed to the actual survey responses coming into the system, um, it, it could take up to, you know, a few hours depending upon the situation. One of the things that you can do is you do have the the capabilities to go in and kind of force that push. It still takes a little bit of time from a processing standpoint, but if it doesn't seem like your items are pushing in, one of the things that you can do is if you go into settings, if you go into your solutions, you will have the capabilities to open up the voice of the customer solution. And inside there, there is an option underneath configuration to basically go ahead and re-trigger your processing information. And so this gives you the capabilities. If you have items that are not being received within that, you know, 15 minutes of the survey being completed, this does give you the capabilities to re-trigger this response. And that'll hopefully reset it. Sometimes you have to do it a couple of times. Sometimes it does, you know, kind of takes up on its own. But I, I have noticed in, in times where things do take a little bit of time, particularly if you're working in like a sandboxed environment or something like that, be aware of that from a, from a testing perspective. So let's go ahead and look at these surveys again. So I'm going to go back into my voice of the customer and I'm going to go into surveys and I'm going to open up this post case follow-up survey. Now, if you're just doing a standard survey that you're going to be sending out from a marketing standpoint, and you just want to get your survey responses that come back into the system, then by all means, you know, just use the, the standard survey functionality. You don't have to worry too much about the feedback. If you want to use feedback, 
now you have the option to come into here and turn this on. Now I'm going to caution you a little bit on the feedback scenario. Keep in mind that obviously you're creating a custom entity in the system. So you're turning on, you're making schema changes to the application as well. So you really do need to be aware of potential system performance. You also need to be aware of what might be happening inside your system if you overuse this functionality. So there is a reason that they do re highly recommend that you only use this for surveys that are going to be, you know, long running situations where where I want to be able to go out and capture what people are saying post case follow up type situation because if you're constantly creating new entities for these situations you're going to have performance implications maybe bad schema information there's a lot of things that could happen that you need to be aware of and so this gives you an opportunity to kind of think about that as you're moving forward now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to create a new survey here just for sample purposes So now I come down here and I can choose to generate feedback. So I can go ahead and choose to automatically generate when the survey is published. So that means when the survey is published, it's automatically going to generate and create the feedback entity for us inside the application. I also have the capability, depending upon how I want to do this, I can manually trigger this and then I can decide when I want to trigger the feedback generation process as I'm going through. Now the nice thing about this is when you define what this situation is, as you create the survey, when it creates the feedback entity or decides how that's going to be configured, it's going to automatically default to the name of your survey. You have the capability at this point to make those changes as the uh, prior to the information being published, but it gives you the capability to keep that in mind if you want to make adjustments. The other thing you have to remember or think about is the type of survey that this is going to be doing. Are you going to be interacting with a case? Are you going to be interacting with an account? How are your cases you know, related to your account and contact records in the system? So this will go ahead behind the scenes and this will create relationships to entities that might need to have a relationship associated with it from a feedback perspective. And so you can automatically have it create a relationship to the account entity or to the contact entity. Con a contact entity will be by default, account won't. Do you want it to generate the form or regenerate the form when the item is, is published? One of the things that you have to kind of keep in mind is it'll create the form or generate the form for you, but it does not actually make customization. So one of the things that you're going to notice is, you know, for your charts and your dashboards and, and anything that you might have generated from this particular item, it's going to create the form, but it's not going to add the fields and, and those items. It's going to be up to you to customize it to fit your needs. Once you've customized the form, I would come in here and turn off the generation option. So it will create the form initially. Once it's been generated, come in here, set this to no, and now you have the capabilities to go and customize the form to fit your needs. And then that way, anytime you republish information or do anything from a survey perspective, it's not necessarily going to affect that information as you're moving forward. The next thing that you have to kind of decide is, you know, this is creating a custom entity with it, with a custom item that's going to be associated with it. So you do have to decide what solution you want to put it into. So in this case, I have a solution that I've created called post case that has a prefix associated with it just for ease purposes that I've kind of already gone through. A couple of things you have to remember on the solution scenario, it has to be an unmanaged solution and you have to pre-create the solution before you can call it into here. So if you don't have the unmanaged solution defined, you will not be able to select anything from this dropdown. Therefore, you will not be able to enable the entity. So you do have to make sure that you Create the solution first, give it a name, unmanaged, and then you can work with it from there. The other thing that you can do is you also have the capability with these survey responses to determine if you want to define any other entity that this feedback might pertain to. So again, this is a scenario where I'm, I might be doing a survey to follow up with a case that somebody sent out to a customer. This would give me the capabilities to define what that is. So in this case, if I want to relate this to that case entity, I could go ahead and type in incident and then bring that information in from here. And then decide as these responses come in, do I want to work this for any of the survey and subsurveys as they're coming in, or do I want this to basically happen, you know, not at all? How do I want to handle the response conversion for how these items are coming in 
when I'm working through it. And then I also have the capabilities to determine whether or not I want to see the navigation pane inside this option. And then if I wanted to, I could create subsurveys and then attach those subsurveys to this item as I'm going through. So what will happen in this situation is now when the surveys are published and the responses start to come in, you will then start to have them converted to feedbacks. And then you can go into the feedback entity and kind of work with it from there. Now, a couple of things that I just want to draw mention as we're going through this, I'm going to go into settings and solutions. Now, I didn't save and publish this, but one of the things that to keep in mind is it does take some time to publish these entities. Um, you will see if you go into settings and into your voice of the customer um, kind of sur uh, survey logs, it'll tell you kind of what's happened from that standpoint as it's gone through and, and look through those options. So it'll tell you, you know, that it created it, that it's generating it, give you some ideas to see what's happening. If there's any issues with generating it, it'll then tell you that in here as well. The other thing that you may notice from a systems perspective when you go into it is if you go into the solution and you open up the solution, the entity may not appear in there. And I've noticed that on in several different situations. It exists. If you go into the default solution, you'll see the entity. It's just not necessarily showing up in the solution. So once you have the entity kind of, you know, brought into here, you would have the capabilities if you wanted to, to, you know, add the existing entity. I could bring it into the app, uh, into my solution, or I could just work with it from a default solution. But it is just like any other entity. So you will have to go in and make customizations to it. Many of your relationships, like the relationship to the contact entity and, and all the other stuff that you've defined will be there and then it will give you the capabilities to start kind of processing your analytics from there but again you know depending upon what it is that you want to do i would definitely only use the feedback functionality when you have you know surveys that are going to be a kind of a staple of your organization the other thing to remember is from a feedback perspective when you start talking about number of questions and those kind of things you are somewhat limited on surveys that are enabled for feedback to the number of questions that you can have on that particular survey and that is actually limited to 40 questions so they are going to be a smaller survey in regards to what you would be looking at but again you know there there's something that you're not necessarily if you're going to use it every day for you know two three years it's not something that you want your customers to have to spend 15 minutes to fill out so you know working within that 40 question limit is probably going to be okay so that's going to do it for our detailed look into responses versus feedback. Um, hopefully, you know that answers some of the questions that people might have. Um, big thing to remember with this is just you know re-trigger as needed if things aren't popping in right away. Keep in mind that you will still have to potentially make some customizations to the entity after the fact. And then just be aware that once you make those customizations on things like the dashboards and the forms, you're going to want to turn off the regeneration of those options or it's going to overwrite what you have within the system. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great way for longer running surveys that you can capture, you know, specific pieces of information and, and now give yourself a more analytical approach that you can use from that. So again, I hope you found it you know beneficial for all of us here at CRM tip of the day this has been Derek saying thanks again for watching everybody take care and have a good one